Hello everyone. Good afternoon. I hope no one is sleepy now. <laughs> Everyone's awake? Yeah. Okay. So I'm Shikha Beth. With over five years of experience in Salesforce, I have had my taste of both products and services. I also lead the Surat India Women in Tech. Okay, before heading to the main topic, I would like to ask a question. What is the most important and critical thing to a business? Security. Security, Security of what? Data. Data, yeah. And is meeting the industry standards and the compliance equally important? Very important. Yeah. So that is what we'll see and you'll uh, experience throughout the session of today. So let's get started. Okay, so what's, what's in for you today is, we'll first understand what is Salesforce Shield, the trio of security that Salesforce Shield offers us. And majorly we'll be focusing on platform encryption today because Shield is a huge thing and we cannot get it in just 20 minutes. And the most important thing is the considerations which we need to keep in mind before making a decision to enable Shield in our org. Okay, so yeah. Now what is Salesforce Shield? It is an extended layer of security that Salesforce allows us to enable apart from the security it already has in place. So extra security, hell lot of monitoring what is happening to my data in the org and also tracking of who is doing what with my data is what Salesforce Shield enables us with. Now the trio of security with Salesforce Shield offers us is namely platform encryption, event monitoring, and field audit trail. Now let's talk about each of them in detail. Platform encryption. Now how platform encryption is different from the classic encryption is, the platform encryption encrypts data at rest. So when I say data at rest, it means it encrypts data at metadata layer, at the place where it is stored. So even if all other lines of defense are compromised, our data is still secure because even in database, it is stored in an encrypted manner. Now, platform encryption also allows us full control over our man key management and key rotation. So when I talk about key management, Salesforce has offered us with two options. First one being we can generate the key in the Salesforce org itself. And the second thing is we can bring our own key which is generated by some other system and use that to encrypt the Salesforce data. And key rotation can be done every four hours in sandbox and every 24 hours in production instance. Now let's see how platform encryption actually works after it is enabled. As soon as a Salesforce user submits a save request, the first thing that gets invoked is the encryption service. The encryption service checks if there is any encryption policy applied to that, that particular, particular operation. If yes, it checks in the cache if there is an encryption key available for encryption. If not, it sends a request to the key derivation server which generates a key of the tenant secret which is generated in the particular org and master secret which is generated uh, at the start of every release by Salesforce itself. So it generates an encryption key and it sends it back to the encryption service. Now as soon as the encryption service receives the encryption key, it generates a random initialization vector, which is used to encrypt the data. The data which is encrypted and the, sorry. Okay, sorry. The data which is encrypted and the initialization vector against that particular operation gets stored in the Salesforce so that it can be used for decryption as and when needed. Now next is event monitoring. Event monitoring allows us to track what is happening to my data, who can access what from where. It also allows us to track if the when the data was created, edited, refreshed, exported and any, many such operations on the data. Apart from that, the interesting thing about event monitoring is the event monitoring data can be accessed via the API. So we just need to enable the setting which allows event monitoring data to be exposed to the analytics app. And then we can just go ahead creating dashboards in the analytics app to get a better visualization of what is happening to my data. 
Now the next thing is field audit trail. Field audit trail is kind of a time machine. It takes us back in time and it allows us to see the state and value of my data at that particular point of time. So up to 50 fields, 60 fields, sorry, 60 fields per object can be tracked and the historical data is stored for up to 18 months in Salesforce. After that, it gets deleted or pushed. Now the thing here to note that is, any historical data that is captured before platform encryption was enabled is still in read, readable state. It is not encrypted. So any data, not, not only historical data, any data that was created or updated prior to enabling platform encryption, that is still in readable mode. If we want to get it encrypted, we need to read Salesforce for that. Okay, now we have been talking a lot. Let's see how it works. I'll open the scratch org. It might take a few seconds where all my platform encryption settings are done. Okay. So let's see first what are the permissions needed to enable platform encryption for our org. It can be given through profiles as well, but I'll prefer permission sets over it because we need to be very careful about whom are we giving the permission to access keys, to generate keys and rotate keys for the org. So here is a permission set which I have created which is named as manage keys. Under the system permissions, there is a permission named manage encryption keys which is enabled for this particular permission set. Now, I'll just show you the screen where this permission set is assigned to the logged in user. So I'm logged in with this user and it has all necessary permissions. Now let's see what platform encryption has for us. So there are majorly, namely uh, four stuffs, key management, encryption statistics, encryption policy, and advanced settings, which we'll go through one by one. Now the first thing is key management. So this is a screen where Salesforce allows us to generate our tenant secret or else we can go ahead and import our own key which is generated by some other external system. So as of now, I have one key generated and it's four hours in sandboxes when you can rotate your keys. Now let's see what is the encryption policy that is set up for this org. Okay, so encrypt files and attachments is enabled. When we talk about fields, it should be phone field of the account object. So this is the phone field of the account object, which is being applied the encryption policy. Now let's see a account record. Okay, so this was the account I had created after generating the first key. So I've named it accordingly, account encrypted with key one. The phone is visible here. Okay, we can read it. Let's see how about the attachments. Okay, so it has no URL, I can download it. Okay, so it is also visible. It is readable. It is just, uh, just some random text I did put in. So even this is visible. Now let's see what happens to the public link. I'll copy this. I'll open this. Now the encryption for uh, files and attachments and fields work a bit differently. For files and attachments, okay, no preview. So I can download it and it gets downloaded successfully even via the public link. Now I'll just close, I'll delete the current key which is being used and generate a new one and let's see what happens to the existing record.
okay. To be sure about it, I will export the current key which is used for encryption. I will generate a new one. As soon as I generate a new one, the first key becomes archived. So, there can be in all 50 keys available in your org, out of which only one can be active and other could be archived or destroyed state. Okay. And now, I will destroy this key, the one which was used for encrypting the record created. Okay, it is asking for a confirmation, let me give it. and destroy. Now, let us see what has happened to our record. The phone number is scrambled. I cannot read it because the encryption key with which it was encrypted is not available, though the user has the permission to see the record. Okay. Now, let us see what has happened to the attachment we had. Okay, it is still, okay. so yeah, I was mentioning that uh, files and attachments and fields work a bit differently. So, any user which has read access to the record could still be able to view the file, irrespective of the key is available or not. But if I hit the link again, the one which was a public link and I try to download it, it should not allow me to download, saying that key was unavailable to encrypt that. Uh, Let us wait for a second. Okay, yeah, it says key is unavailable, right. So, this, this proves that yeah, our, our platform encryption is in intact after it is turned off. Okay, now let me go ahead and import the key which we had exported, so that we can again see the phone field as well with all having all the necessary permissions. Now, this is the key which I have uploaded because it is available. Let me move back to the account. Okay. I can again see the data I had entered in my phone field. Now, let us see what is the statistics, what encryption statistics has to offer us. We all are not new users of Salesforce, our production already exists. So, what happens to the data? How will we get to know that the data which already exists is encrypted or not? So, this is where encryption statistics comes in picture. The left panel lists down everything for what you have turned, uh, enabled the encryption policies for. May it be any f single field on any objects or any attachments and content documents. Because I have enabled phone field for account and the attachments and notes, this is why these three objects are available here. So, and this screen allows us to gather the statistics. Now, if you note here, there are two columns, the encrypted records and the unencrypted records, which shows that which record, how many records in my org are encrypted and how many are still in readable state. Also, we can gather the statistics once in every 24 hours. So, because this has not been gathered for last 24 hours, it is allowing me to gather. Okay. So, even now, see, even here we have a message, we can gather statistics in every 24 hours and this becomes disabled, because I have already gathered the statistics. So, even now the encrypted record is 1 and unencrypted is 1. What were the fields involved in the encryption? So, all the details related to encryption will be available here. Okay, now, let us move back to the slides. Okay, there are a few considerations which need to be kept in mind before we take a decision on whether we want our uh, org to have platform encryption or not. So, first thing is custom fields. So, when we talk about custom fields, after the encryption has been enabled for the uh, fields, we cannot use them in filtering and sorting context. And there are some sharing rules uh, in SOQL, SOSL as well. We have where clauses, uh, many of the clauses, aggregate functions which cannot be used, the, those encrypted fields cannot be used in them once the encryption has been enabled for them. Then portals, if portals is enabled, it is uh, difficult 
uh, it is like impossible to encrypt these uh, standard fields, you will get a notification uh, that this your field cannot be enabled with encryption because portals is enabled in our own. But communities are absolutely uh, comfortable with platform encryption. Now field audit trail, as I have already mentioned, any historical data which is captured before platform encryption was enabled will still be in readable mode and not in uh, encrypted thing. Now, there, if there are any app exchange apps which are installed in your org, you need to consider them as well because there are there is a list of apps which do not support platform encryption yet. Few to name are Commerce Cloud, uh, CPQ, Quip, Padot. These still do not uh, support platform encryption. Now, apart from that. We should always do two analysis before enabling encryption for our org, that is threat analysis and the implementation analysis. So with the threat analysis, we'll get a clarity on do we really need platform encryption? If And we'll get to a conclusion that what is really necessary should be encrypted, not everything should be encrypted. Okay, now any questions? Oh, either everyone understood everything or just nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm taking it in a positive way. Okay. Is there any limitation uh, to encryption for uh, like platform encryption apart from the ones you mentioned yeah. on the license side? No, actually uh, encryption is not nothing about the license or even the cost and pricing does not is not per user per license. It is more about data. So it is uh, something I think 30% of the Salesforce usage what you have is what is cost. So it has no uh, limitations for license. Mm -hmm. It is available for okay, everyone. It's limited on the data usage. The, uh, yeah. the data usage is consumed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And how much does field history tracking use? Because if I just need to use field history tracking, I can use those uh, fields in portals or community and it will be fine. Yeah. Yeah, it, after 18 months, it gets deleted from Salesforce. Okay. Anything? Okay. Thank you, everyone, for listening to me. And thank you, London's Calling team, for putting so much efforts for this together. Thank you. Thank you.